when we're out here fishing, there's many situations where you get kind of, I guess, between a rock and a hard spot where you've got fish that want to feed on the surface, right? They're high in the water column, they're looking up, they're feeding on bait that's relating to the surface of the water column, but you've got windy conditions like we've got here today, right? We've got a ripple on the water and the way that you combat that is you take a big topwater plug, a big walking bait like this Storm Arashi top walker. This is the 13 size and that's that bigger top water. It's loud. It's going to create a lot of commotion. It's going to move a lot of water and it's going to allow those fish to be able to track it in the windy conditions. And so anytime you're out there and you've been on a good top water bite and the wind may pick up and you all of a sudden you're not getting bit anymore, sometimes all you need to do is go to a bigger top water that's got a little bit more commotion where those fish can track it and they can find that bait in the windy conditions. The reason that I like this bait so much is the fact that I can fish it at just about any speed. I can fish it extremely slow with big pauses and allow this bait to glide really far. It's got a, a long travel in its cadence and I can create a lot of commotion with that bait so that those fish can track this thing. But say you're fishing a blueback herring type lake where the bait fish, they move extremely quick and you wanna be able to move that bait fast side to side, well you can do that. And it's not gonna blow out on you. It's gonna continue to push a ton of water, move side to side. All you gotta do is create quicker movements with your rod tip. Pay attention to how the fish want that bait. A lot of times cadence is everything and a general rule of thumb for me, largemouth typically like a bait moving slower and smallmouth like it moving quicker. And so if I have an area where I'm fishing for largemouth and I have fish blow up on a bait, a lot of times I'll stop it and I'll let it sit and they'll come back and they'll eat it. If I'm fishing for smallmouth and I'm fishing that bait and a school comes up behind it and one blows up and misses it completely, I just keep that bait moving. Because for some reason, the way that a smallmouth is wired compared to a largemouth, they like that bait to continue to move. So keep that in mind, pay attention to your cadence, and make sure that you're able to make really long casts. One thing that allows me to do that is being able to throw this on a braided line. I'll throw it on a 20 pound Berkeley Trilene Performance braid. And what that's gonna allow me to do is make those really long casts. Because a lot of times you'll see fish, that will start to bust and you gotta be able to make that cast out there, get it to where those fish are at, and it allows me to get a better uh -oh. hook in those fish. Oh, he got us down in that grass. He came up and blew up out of one of those thick grass patches on that Stormarashi top walker. And that's one reason that braid, that braid plays such a huge role, is when you're fishing this grass, it's able to cut through that grass. And you can see when we get him up here, See the importance of those three hooks, how he's now, he's got all three hooks. When he jumped out there, the first time he only had one hook, now he's got three, so. And one key thing is to remember, if you're fishing for smallmouth, you're probably gonna want a little bit of stretch because they're gonna be even more aggressive. They like to jump. So a lot of times I'll stay with a, a braid. It's gonna float, but I'll attach a mono leader. I'll attach maybe two or three feet of a monofilament leader. And what that's gonna allow me to do is still keep my bait up on top, but it's gonna allow me to have a little bit of stretch for those aggressive smallmouth. 